भगवती वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवती वासुदेवाया सो हरे कृष्णा डियर डिवोटीज थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर जॉइनिंग अस वांटेड टू सीक योर गुड विशेस एंड योर ब्लेसिंग्स सो दैट वी कैन प्लीज द लॉर्ड एंड हिज डिवोटीज बाय गैदरिंग टुडे एंड डूइंग सम कृष्णा कथा भक्त कथा एंड भागवतम कथा सो इज द अपीयरेंस दे ऑफ वीरभद्र uh prabhu goswami and i wanted to spend just a little time on uh just uh sharing a little bit about this uh, glorious personality there isn't too much uh to share but um, what i have i will share so um shri virachandra is known also as appeared uh, today like the ninth day of kartik and in the place called karadha adha uh, uh, in west bengal and chetan in chetan chetan chetamrit in the adi leela uh, krishna das kaviraj uh, speaks about him after nitin and the prabhu the greatest branch is virbhadra gosani who also has innumerable branches and sub branches it is not possible to describe them all these branches uh, krishna kaviraj describes the tree of uh, devotion tree of chaitanya mahaprabhu who is the main uh, branch of everything for uh, emanating from uh, from this tree and then uh, it krishna kaviraj describes how different devotees there are different branches of course nityananda prabhu is uh, one of the biggest branches as is his son virabhadra gosani Although Vidra Badra Gosani was the supreme personality of Godhead, he presented himself as a great devotee. And although the supreme Godhead is transcendent to all Vedic injunctions, he strictly followed the Vedic injunctions which chose. He was the main pillar in the whole of uh, devotional service erected by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He knew within himself that he acted as the supreme Lord Vishnu. but externally he was prideless it is by the mercy of shri virabhadra gosani that people all over the world now have the chance to chant the names of chitanya and nityananda i take shelter of the lotus feet of virabhadra gosani so that by his mercy my great desire to write shri chitanya chaitamrit will be properly guided so this is in the adi lila right at the beginning um that should be 118 oh no that should be 182 it should be the first chapter 8 verse uh, from verse 8 to verse 12 let me to change that so this is a deity of him in his birthplace which is worshiped in the temple so the best of all nityananda's uh, prabhu's branches is virabhadra goswami the sub branches which grew out of him are unlimited in number so this is again adilla i think that should be chapter 1 uh, 56 text 56 virabhadra is a son of nityananda prabhu and the disciple of janava mata his uh, mother is vasudha devi so nityananda had two wives putrampatis patnis and um, vasudha is the mother and the spiritual master is janava so you can see the power of janava janava devi in the gaura ganodesh dipika it is described that shri virabhadra prabhu is an incarnation of shiro dakshai vishnu one of the expansions of shri shankarachan he is thus not different from lord chaitanya himself and this verse is quoted in that book sankarsanasya yogya u ई Shri Krishna is the uh, avatar, the origin of all expansions and avatars. From him comes Balaram, uh, from whom comes the uh, Chaturvyu, the first Chaturvyu, um, 
And from that, Sh Mahashankarshan comes from Mahashankarshan, Narayan expands. From Narayan, we have the second Chaturview from who, whom uh, comes Shankarshan. And from Shankarshan are the, Maha, the um, Vishnu Pur, Pur, um, Purush avatars. So Karnadaksha Vishnu, Mahavishnu, that is. Garbadaksha Vishnu enters into every single universe. And then Shirodaksha Vishnu enters into every uh, atom, every living entity. So uh, this is um, who Virabhadra, Virabhadra is the incarnation of Shirodaksha Vishnu. Actually, Shirodaksha Vishnu has many, many expansions. Most of the Lilavatars are expansions of Shirodaksha Vishnu. Also known as Anirudh, Shirodaksha Vishnu appeared in the course of Mahaprabhu, Sri Chaitanya's pastimes as Virabhadra Prabhu, the son of Lord Nityananda and his energy was Shuddha. So this is uh, from the Bhakta Ratnakar. He was an ocean of virtue and redeemed redeemer of the world. There is no limit to his glories. So can we sufficiently glorify him? He is famed as the branch of Nityananda Prabhu, the root of all joy. He is sometimes known as Virabhadra and sometimes as Virachandra. If anyone sees him even once, he will give up everything and make his lotus feet his all in all. He was married, he, he married to Yadu Nandan's wife. Uh, Yadu Nandan's wife, Lakshmi, uh, was very chaste and devoted. They had two daughters and their names were Shimati and Narayani and who were very beautiful. And Janava Devi, whose disciple is Virabhadra, asked Yadu Nandan for the hand of these two daughters to Virabhadra, and the, he agreed. Uh, Virabhadra Prabhu took initiation from Janava in his Anubhasya, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami has written. Um, Virabhadra Goswami had three disciples who later celebrated as his sons. They were not his sons, they were his disciples, but they were as good as, as his sons. They were his spiritual sons. Gopi Janvalap, Ramakrishna, and Ramachandra. The youngest Ramachandra belonged to Kardara. This that's the town of Vira, Virabhadra. The eldest, uh, Gopi Janvalap, was a resident of a village called Latta and near the Monko railway station in the district of Burdhan, Bur, Burdhan. So Prabhupada's gone into a lot of detail. Mm -hmm. The second, uh, the middle child uh, or disciple Ramakrishna lived near Malda in a village called Gayeshpur. So Yadu Nandan even became the disciple of Virachandra Prabhu. Um, and Srimati and Narayani were given initiation by Janava Mata. Virachandra had a sister, so that uh, must have been the daughter of Vasudha. Her name is Ganga Devi, who was none other than Ganga Mata herself. And her husband was Madhavacharya, not the Madhavacharya we know, of course, that he came long before. Uh, who th this person was an incarnation of Shantanu, who appears in the Mahabharata. So according to the 13th chapter of Bhaktaratnakar, Virabhadra Prabhu took permission from his mother Vashuddha to go to Bandavan upon arriving there. And I think he went with Janava Devi, at least uh, on one visit, definitely they were together. Uh, he performed Bajdam Parikram with the blessings of um, Bhurgapa Goswami and Jiva Goswami. The old Shamsunda temple in Kardara has a manuscript of Srimad Bhagavatam that is hand copied by Veera Patra Prabhu. Some hold that this was actually written by Nityananda himself. Mm. Interesting. Veera Bhadra Prabhu personally brought a piece of stone from which the deity Shyam Sundar, Radhavalap, and Nanda Dulal became manifest. These deities are still worshipped in Karda. The gut where this stone arrived is known as Shyam Sundar Gut. Veera Bhadra Prabhu established a custom of celebrating the birth of Nityananda Prabhu at Karda. During his time, the offerings during the festival were prepared using 60 kilos of rice and equal amounts of other materials. 
So that's it. That's what I wanted to share. Um, we'd like to seek the blessings of Vira Bhadra Prabhu so that we can advance in our Krishna consciousness. Vira Bhadra Prabhu Ki Jai. So let me open up. Um, let me open up the Bhagavatam. So Induleka Mataji. Are you there? Oh, can we hear her? Maybe she, we can't hear you. Okay, let's have a look. One second. Hare Krishna Babaji. Yes, ah, I'm good. here, sorry. Ah, good, 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 yes. Hare Krishna, everyone. Hare Krishna, very good. Uh, so let me just uh, find the lessons. I've got all of them now, I think. All 33. 33, yeah, good. Okay, can you hear me properly, everyone? Yes. Thank you. Hare Krishna, everyone. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay. So, um, Prabhuji, before starting, uh, I would like to glorify the Bhagavatam. Um, I think you I think you already did, but I am going to do according to the Krishna Lila Stava by Sanatan Goswami. There's okay. five verses, and I will do that first. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Please um, give me your blessings and your good wishes, as uh, Nabi Prabhu asks every day. Today, give me. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, so we. I will start. Um, this is uh, Bhagavatam glorified by Sanatan Goswami. Sarva Sastra Bibiusha, Sarva Vedake Satpala, Sarva Siddhanta Ratnadhya, Sarva Loki Kadrik Prada. Translation O Srimad Bhagavatam, O Nectar Chan from the ocean of all scriptures, you are the most prominent transcendental fruit of the Vedas and rich with the jewels of all the conclusive truths. You grant spiritual vision to all the people of the world. Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavata Prabhu, Kali Dvandu Ditya Ditya, Sri Krishna Paribhartite, O like breast of the Vaishnava devotees, O Lord, you are the sun which has risen to dispel the darkness of Kali Yuga. You are actually Lord Krishna who has returned among us. Paramananda Pataya, Prema Varsi Aksharayate, Sarvada Sarva Sevyaya, Sri Krishnaya Namastume. <clears throat> o Srimad Bhagavatam, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. By your recitation, one attain transcendental bliss because your syllables shower pure love of God upon the reader. You are always to be served by everyone, for you are an incarnation of Lord Sri Krishna. Mat eka bandhu mat sangin, mat guru mat mahadhana, ma nistaraka mat bhagya, mat ananda namastute. O Srimad Bhagavatam, O my only friend, O my companion, O my teacher, O my great wealth, O my deliverer, O my good fortune, O my bliss, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. Asadhu sadhu tadain, ati nischa upcha taraka, hana muncha kadachin mam, premna hrikantayo spura. O Srimad Bhagavatam, O bestower of, of the saintliness to the unsaintly, O uplifter of the most fallen, please don't ever leave me. Please manifest yourself in my heart and in my throat, accompanied by pure love of Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. Thank you for joining everyone. So um, I will uh, read the lessons. This is, these are the lessons from uh, Canto Free. I will read um, like chapter one and I will give a little uh, explanation on it or realization on it. Okay, Prabhuji, is that okay? Nabi Prabhu? That's good. Okay, so the chapter one it says, 
If we make our home a temple, the Lord will definitely visit us. So here, the, this is the first um, uh, chapter and the title is the first step in God realization. And here the mantra, Om Namo Bhagavati. Is this Kanto? Sorry, I'm, I'm taking from Kanto too. I should be stuck at Kanto free, sorry. Okay, this is Kanto free. Yes. So if we, may, if we make our home a temple, the Lord will definitely visit us. So this is a title is questioned by Vidura. So the Pandavas have, um, Pandavas house was a temple. So Lord Sri Krishna would visit them whenever, anytime, and whenever he wanted to and without um, announcing them. Also here we learn that we need to visit the holy places for our spiritual enlightenment and not for enjoying our senses, not for enjoying ourselves. And also I will explain a little bit more at the end when um, uh, I'm going to tell about how to uh, inculcate all these lessons into our life. Then I will, I will tell a little bit more on this one. Okay, so number two. In this age of Kali, our only um, tapasya is to chant the holy name of the Lord. And, and number two title is Remembrance of Lord, of Lord Krishna. Here we learn how Uddhava went into deep ecstasy, remembering his lifelong worshipper, Lord Sri Krishna, while relating the Lord's pastime in Vindavan. Also how the Lord pure devotees cannot live in separation from the Lord. They are compared as fish without water. And chapter three, we all need a guru to guide us on the spiritual path. And the title is The Lord's Pastime Out of Vrindavan. In this chapter, we learn that even the Lord, <coughs> he went to study at Sandeep Nimuni uh, Ashram. Also, we need uh, to give Guru Dakshina. So Lord Sri Krishna brought back the dead son of his guru as Guru Dakshina, setting an example for us. Whoever is giving us some knowledge, we need to give Guru Dakshina. And uh, chapter four, no matter how learned one may be, one should not try to instruct someone who is well-versed in spiritual knowledge and who is older than them, unless solicited. So here, um, uh, the title is Vidura Approaches Maitreya. Here we learn from Vidura, from Udhav, who was a great student. And um, he was a student of Brihaspati. And um, Lord Sri Krishna himself also instructed him before leaving this mortal world that it was not uh, appropriate to instruct or to answer Vidura's question. He thought that um, he was, uh, although he was so learned, he thought he respected Vidura. He didn't want to instruct Vidura. And so, um, because Vidura was older than him, and uh, he, he was already a great devotee of the Lord. So Udhava suggested that Virura should meet Maitreya Muni, who would answer all his questions. And uh, chapter five, the Lord, um, eter, external, um, chapter five. the Lord external energy is Maya and through her, the entire material world is created. So the title of this uh, chapter is Vidura's talk with Maitreya. Maitreya Muni explained to Vidura about the creation of the material universe. Although Maya uh, or the illusory energy is used for creation of the material world, still the Supreme Lord controls everything. Thus, by his supreme arrangement only, the activities of the material nature are planned and are systematic. In this way, everything evolved regularly. And then chapter six, we should always engage in discussion of the activities and, and glories of the Lord, which are nicely written um, by the sages. Um, yes, written by the great sages. Yes, number six, for our benefit. So here the title is creation of the universal form. The demigods found hard to work together. So they prayed to the Lord for help. And so the Lord manifested and from each part of his body, each element came into being. The Lord himself enters in each element. Even the four orders of life were created by the Lord. They are the Brahmanas, Kshatriya, Vaishyas, and the Sudras. So in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 2, verse 13, is Prabhupada nicely explained in his purport about the four castes and the four orders of life. 
the aim of the division of life is to please um, the Supreme Personality of Godhead only. And then we go to chapter seven. By serving the spiritual master, one develops transcendental ecstasy in the service of the Lord. And when, um, who vanquishes one's material distress? So the title of, number, of chapter seven is Further Inquiries by Vidura. Here Maitreya Muni is explaining to Vidura how by serving the spiritual master, we can develop attachment for the service of the Lord. Also different kind of mellows are mentioned here. One can render devotional service to the Lord in the mood of friendship, parent, servitor, conjugal lover, or one, one can be neutral. Thus, by a constant devotional service to the Lord, one att our attachment to the material world is automatically vanquished. So we don't have any uh, attachment to this material world. And then chapter eight, the Supreme Personality of God had spoke this Srimad Bhagavatam to the great sages for the benefit of the um, eight, for the benefit of those entangled in the material uh, miseries. And the title of chapter uh, eight mm -hmm. is Manifestation of Brahma's Form uh, from Garbhodaksaya Vishnu. So in this chapter, Maitreya Muni thanked Vidura for asking such question and praised him by saying that he was happy to be in the company of Vidura and considered this association most desirable. Because Vidura's question can accelerate one's dormant propensity for devotional service. Um, also, also, only the fortunate ones can get out of the material entanglement. Anybody um, saying something here? Oh, sorry, carry on. No? Okay. So chapter nine, if we want, <clears throat> chapter nine, if we want to escape the anxieties of the material world, we need to take shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. And the title of chapter nine is Brahma's prayer for, create, for um, creative energy. So after many, many years of penances and prayers, Lord Brahma could see the Garbhodakshayi Vishnu, and he was very satisfied upon um, observing the beauty and opulence of the Lord. He realized that his birth was from the stem of the lotus coming out of Garbhodaksaya Vishnu's navel. So Lord Brahma also realized that this incarnation of Vishnu is the origin of many other incarnations and that we, are, we all should take shelter of his lotus feet. Chapter 10, all living entities are struggling with the forces of material nature, but by transcendental knowledge and realization and by surrendering unto the Lord, we can control this material energy. And uh, the title of uh, chapter 10 is Divisions of the Creation. In this chapter, Vidura continues to inquire from Maitreya Muni, he inquires about the eternal time and Maitreya Muni explain about the cosmic manifestation, which never changes. How, um, here it is also explained about the different living entities, movable and unmovable, the creation of the demigods, the forefathers and the demons, the angels, the ghosts, the superhuman beings who are all created by Lord Brahma, the creator of the universe. And then we go to chapter 11. Yeah. The Lord controls all the physical movements by his time potency, yet he is not visible in the physical world. And the title is Calculation of Time from the Atom. Chapter 11 mostly deals with calculation of time and the material manifestation is ultimate, uh, and the material manifestation's ultimate particle, which is the atom. So different names are given to different time factor. It is also stated herein that the sun is considered to be the eye of the Lord, which rotates within the fixed orbit of eternal time. The sun is the king of all planetary system and has unlimited potency in heat and light. Chapter 12, we should always try to control our anger because once escalates, anger turns into wrath. The so title is creation of the Kumaras and others. So, so here Lord Brahma first created deception, source of death, anger, frustration, illusion, and forgetfulness. He was not happy. Thus, after, after again meditating on the Lord, he created the four Kumaras, who were very elevated souls and refused to 
adopt their material activities. So Lord Brahma became very angry and from between his eyebrows, Rudra appeared. Lord Brahma then told Rudra to increase the population on a large scale. But due to uh, being born from anger, they all attempted to devour the, the whole universe. So Lord Brahma became very afraid. Being ordered by Lord Brahma, Rudra retired in the forest to meditate on the Supreme Lord. So after meditating again upon the Supreme Lord, Lord Brahma created 10 pious sons, including Narad Muni. Thus, the whole world was filled with population by them. And then um, chapter 13, chapter 13, um, we should live our life in pursuance of the principles of devotional service and worship of the Lord by performance of Yajna. And the title of chapter 13 is the appearance of Lord Baraha. So from Lord Brahma, Manu, the father of mankind was born. And when Lord Brahma told Manu to populate the earth, he realized that mother earth was <clears throat> submerged under the ocean. So Lord Brahma was thinking about how to bring mother earth back to her orbit. Then suddenly a tiny bow come out of, came out of his nostril. And in no time, the bow grew to look like a mountain and started roaring. So Lord Brahma and the sages offered prayers to him, knowing him to be Vishnu. And um, as we know, this incarnation is Lord Varaha. He carried Mother Earth back to her orbit after killing Hiranyaksha, the great demon, brother of Hiranyakashapu. All the sages glorified the Lord. And chapter 14, a good combination for spiritual advancement is needed in the human society. Thus, boys should be trained as brahmacharis and girls in the virtue of chastity. So here the title is Pregnancy of DT in the Evening. So Vidura, who was a faithful devotee of the Lord, wanted to listen more about the Lord's pastime. And then um, he urged Maitreya Muni to tell him more about the um, to the more about the Lord. In this chapter, we learn that Daksh had over had hand over his 13 daughters in marriage to Kashyapa Muni. One of them, namely Diti, did not have son. So desiring to get son, she approached her husband. But her husband knew that the time was inappropriate, inauspicious for procuring progeny. Yet he was obli obliged by his wife's desire. Diti neglected all the principles of scriptural injunction and knew that her sons would be demons. So she repented and prayed to the Lord. So thus she got the boon that her grandson would become a very pious devotee of the Lord. And we know he is a great Prahlad Maharaj. So we move on to chapter 15. So only in the human form of life, one can attain perfect religious knowledge, even the demigod desire to have such life. And the title is Description of the Kingdom of God. Chapter 15 describes the beauty and opulence of the Vaikuntha planets and how Lakshmi Devi herself worshiped the Lord with Tulsi leaves. It is also stated that even the demigod desire to have human life so they can attain transcendental knowledge and religious perfection. Here, the qualities of a devotee is also mentioned. Furthermore, the meeting of the four Kumaras with the two doorkeepers of Vaikuntha Loka, the cursing of the four Kumaras and the meeting, uh, the meeting the Lord personally also is described. The four Kumaras prayed to the Lord, saying that they, they, they did not mind being born in any hellish condition of life as long as they are engaged in the service of the Lord, Lord Lotus Feet. And then we go to chapter 16. The water of the Ganges sanctified the free world because it has washed the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So the title is The Two Doorkeepers of Vaikuntha, Jaya and Vijaya, Cursed by the Sages. The Lord favors the Brahmanas, the cows, and nobody should disrespect them. A Brahmana who is born in the family of Brahmana but who does not adhere to the spiritual injunction is not considered a bona fide Brahmana, whereas a devotee of the Lord no matter from which caste they come from are considered Brahmanas because they have understood the personality of Godhead. Here's a folk Maras. They were very young 
They were denied entry in the Vaikuntha Loka. So they cursed the doorkeeper, Jayan Vijaya, to come down to the material world. And the Lord accepted their decision because the Brahmanas are very dear to him. Chapter 17. <clears throat> For peace to prevail in society, we need to follow uh, regulatives, regulations in life. Otherwise, we will have to undergo the stringent reaction of nature's law. The title of the chapter is Victory of Hiranyaksha over all the direction of the universe. So when the two sons of Diti were born, there were very bad omens everywhere and everyone was scared. But the four Kumaras knew they were Jayan Vijay who came down at Hiranyaksha and Hiranyaksha. These two demons were so frightful that even the demigods were scared of them. When Hiranyaksha challenged the lord of the aquatics, Varuna, he was advised to challenge the lord in his incarnation as a form, namely Lord Varaha. Now chapter 18, no one can surpass the potencies of the lord and no one should deride the transcendental form of the lord as material. And the title of the chapter is The Battle Between the Lord Bo and the Demon Hiranyaksha. So this chapter revolved around the fight between Hiranyaksha and Lord Varaha. All the demigods accompanied by Lord Brahma came to see the terrible fight. Lord Brahma told the Lord that the demons became powerful due to a bone obtained by Lord Brahma and that he was harassing everyone. So. Lord Brahma begged the Lord to kill the demon before he could become more powerful as the time, the favorable time for him was approaching. So the Lord was just uh, fighting with um, the Nyaksha and then Lord Brahma prayed, said, don't delay, just kill him. Chapter 19, we should always abide to rules and regulation in, in every aspect of life and respect our opponents. Title is the killing of the demon Hiranyaksha. In this chapter, the fight continues. We can see that uh, even being a demon, Hiranyaks abide to the rules of fighting. Both the Lord and the demon did not attack each other when their weapons slipped off their hands, meaning when they were unarmed. At some point, it looks like it was the end of the universe. Didi remembering her husband's word became very fearful. The Lord killing Hiranyaksha, thus liberating him from the mortal world. It is said that even a demon can be liberated if he is simply kicked by the Lord. The Lord is so merciful. Chapter 20, as soon as one forgets one primary duty, which is to render devotional service unto the Lord, one creates the atmosphere of sense enjoyment. The title of the chapter is Conversation Between Maitreya and Vidura. So Sonaka Rishi kept asking from Sutta Goswami about the meeting of Vidura and Maitreya Muni, um, who explained about the five elements, the five sense object, the five sense organ, the five working senses, and the um, deities who control these divisions. The discussion went on about how the Lord created the universe, how Lord Brahma created different species of life, human being, demons, demigod from different aspects of his behaviors. He realized that all the living entities were conditioned soul, so he did austere penances and evolved great sages to whom he gave a part of his body individually. And then we move on to chapter 21. 21 is the Lord knew what his devotee needs and the Lord knows, sorry, the Lord knows what his devotees need and without asking, he makes arrangement to fulfill those needs. And the title of the chapter is Conversation Between Manu and Kardama. In this chapter, we learn about different Manus. The present age belongs to Vaivasvata Manu. Actually, Manu is a father of mankind. <laughs> we also learn about the Prajapatis who are great personalities born out of the mind of Lord Brahma. Among them was Kardamuni, who did great penances for 10,000 years and offered prayers to the Supreme Lord. Being very satisfied by his prayers, the Lord appeared in front of Kardamuni and promised to incarnate as his son through his wife, Devahuti, daughter of Swayambhuva Muni. So chapter 22, the perfection of spiritual life can be achieved by um, by touching the dust of the lotus feet of a holy man and by associating with him. The title of the chapter is The Marriage of Karnamamuni and Devahuti. So even though 
uh, Manu was a father of mankind and a great king. When he went to give his daughter Devahuti in marriage to Kardam Muni, he bowed down at the lotus feet of the great sage Kardam. It is stated here that unless one is fortunate enough to have the dust of the lotus feet of a Mahatma, a great devotee, on one's head, there is no possibility of perfection in one's spiritual life. So the emperor, that is Manu, left for his palace after being satisfied that his daughter was in safe hands, even though Kardamuni was living in a hut. Manu spent his life, his life in the thought of the Lord. He's, he lived for 71 cycle of the four ages. So we go to chapter 23. Half of the benefit acquired by a pious man goes to his chaste wife who supports him throughout their lives. The title is Devahuti's Lamentation. Devahuti, who was a chaste wife, served Kandamuni very nicely, thus neglecting, neglecting her own body and health. Noticing that his wife has become weak and thin, Kardamuni blessed her with all the result he accrued through his pieties. So Devahuti, desiring to have children, approached her husband. Kardamuni instructed his wife to take bath in the holy Bindu Sarovar, which rejuvenated her, her body. Kardamuni created a celestial palace which could fly around the universe. They had nine daughters and one son, incarnation of the Lord. Then Kardamuni left home to pursue his spiritual life, leaving his wife at the, on the hand of their son. So chapter 24, according to the Vedic scriptures, a son should obey to the commands of his father and spiritual master with reverence. The title is Renunciation of Kardamuni. Lord Brahma visited Kardamuni and he praised him. Lord Brahma was very satisfied with the action of Kardamuni because Kardamuni obeyed to the orders of his father, who was Lord Brahma. So Kardamuni was one of the Prajapatis. So after uh, handing over his nine daughters to qualified Brahmanas, his marriage, Kardamuni left his wife in the care of Kapil, Lord Kapil Dev, who appeared as their son and he left for the forest to meditate upon the Lord. So chapter 25, <clears throat> following the path of sadhus who are tolerant, merciful, peaceful, and friendly will help us progress in a spiritual life. The title of this chapter is The Glories of Devotional Service. Here Lord Kapil Dev is explaining to his mother about Shravanam and Kirtanam, these processes. So by associating of devotees and by discussing about the pastime and activities of the Lord, we gradually become advanced on the path of liberation. So <clears throat> association of non-devotees who do not have a proper knowledge of a spiritual life should be avoided. So chapter 26, spiritual knowledge leads us to attain the, um, to attain the attainment Perfect, to attain perfection of life, which can free us from material entanglement. So the title is Fundamental Principles of Material Nature. So by self, um, by self realization, one can be freed from material attachment. Knowledge leads one to the ultimate perfection of life. Kapil Dev is the greatest authority because he is the incarnation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And he is explaining the knowledge of self-realization to his mother, Devahuti. That the knowledge which uh, can cut the knot of attachment to material world. Chapter 26. <clears throat> I did, I did the 26, yeah, 26, 27, yes. So to keep the mind and consciousness under full control, one must very seriously perform the personal service with detachment. So title is understanding material nature. All living entities are transcendental to material existence, but because of our mentality of loading it over material nature, our existential conditions do not change. If we don't engage our mind and consciousness in the devotional service of the Lord, personality of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, there are all possibilities that our mind become occupied with desires for sense gratification. And then chapter 28, the Lord is eternally very beautiful, 
and he is worshipped by all the inhabitants of every planet. So here title is Kapil Dev's instruction on the, on the execution of devotional service. This chapter deals mostly with explanation of the yoga procedures and their benefit. Also the Lord's beautiful futures are described and it is also stated that anyone who is eternally associated with the Lord is glorified with the Lord. Example of Arjuna, Prahalad Maharaj, Bali Maharaj, and Janak Maharaj are mentioned here. And material nature and the characteristics of spirit, spirit according to the Sankhya system also. Uh, Sankhya system of philosophy is also explained by the Lord to his mother. So chapter 19, when one's consciousness is purified, then immediately the transcendental qualities of the Lord is attracted. The title is Explanation of Devotional Service by Lord Kapil. As living entities, we have minute independence, but if we misuse it, we will be influenced by Maya. Here, devotional service is also explained in the three modes, namely ignorance, passion, and goodness. But the highest devotional service can overcome the influence of the three modes of material nature and can be situated in the transcendental stage when executed without any material profit and in a spirit of renunciation. Chapter 30, <clears throat> the conditioned soul lament because as time factor, the Lord destroyed all their so-called happiness. And the uh, title is description of Lord Kapila of, of adverse fruitive activities. So people who do not have the spiritual knowledge uh, think that this material world is permanent and they work hard to secure wealth and to support their family. They are controlled by sense gratification and think that they are happy. But at the end, they die in great pain without consciousness. Thus, they are taken to hell by the Yamadutas after having purged of their, of their sins. They, got, um, they are reborn again in this material world and uh, they are given a second chance. In chapter 31, when a conditioned soul is anxious to get out of the material pleasures, the Lord provides the appropriate opportunity. Um, uh, the title is Lord Kapila's instruction on the movement of the living entities. So in this chapter, Lord Kapila gives a very clear description of how an embryo is formed and how much suffer suffering is there. The suffering continues as a living entity comes into this material world. If one doesn't realize the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one is bound to suffer and at the end go to hell to come back again, to continue on the same uh, path, like uh, birth, death, and um, old age and death again. So 32, to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead, we have to ultimately accept the Bhakti Yoga process. So title is Entanglement in Fruitive Activities. So there are three kinds of yogas, some practices, uh, Yoga, sorry, yogas. Some practices jnana yoga, astanga yoga, and etc., and try to detach the senses from material enjoyment. But the devotees try to engage the senses in the service of the Lord by performing devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One can, uh, one can achieve the perfect knowledge and get free from material entanglement. And finally, chapter 33. A person who chants the holy name of the Lord, even if born in a Chandala's family, that is dog eater's family, immediately becomes purified as a most learned Brahmanas. So here the title is Activities of a Kapila. Mother Devahuti was pleased by the uh, instruction of Lord Kapila and she offered nice prayers to the Lord. So being very satisfied, the Lord told his mother that uh, she would soon be liberated within her present body. The Lord then took permission from his mother and left home. Um, but Mother Devahuti, she did not leave her home. She um, practiced bhakti yoga, and she and she was she was aggrieved um, at the loss of her son. <laughs> and finally, Maitreya Muni said that. 
<laughs> the material elements of Mother Devahuti's body melted into the water and are now a flowing river, which is the most sacred river of, of the rivers. Oh, Anyone who birthed in the in these rivers are also at, will also attain perfection. Mother Devahuti attained the highest perfection of human life, and she was promoted to the Kapila Vaikunta, where she resides eternally in the company of her transcendental son. Prantarat Simad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Okay. Now, um, well done, Maji. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank yes. you. But now, um, if yeah. uh, do you have time, I can. Um, no, explain. but what are you thinking of doing? Sorry? What are you thinking of doing? Um, how to inculcate these lessons into our life, daily life? Why don't we do that tomorrow? Um, Fine, no problem. Take some time, and we should spend time yes. on how to incorporate. Yes. Yeah. That's okay. okay. Okay, tomorrow I can. Oh, we can do that day after, which is Wednesday. Chitra can do questions on Canto One and Canto Two. Tomorrow. No, on uh, Wednesday. Okay. Canto so One. Tomorrow is Kadashi, yeah, right? Wednesday is Kadashi. In Canada, it might be, but here it is in on Wednesday, Kadashi. <laughs> okay. And on Thursday, we will do the questions on uh, Canto 3. And then Friday. Oh, everyone's realization. Oh, Friday, yeah. Friday, we want um, everybody. Yes, everybody to participate. But Prabhuji, which, which calendar do you use? We got G Cal. I, 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 I use from, manner. from the manner. From the manner. Hmm. Yeah, the manner is tomorrow. I mean, the manner yes. is the Wednesday. Wednesday. But you shouldn't use a manner calendar mm. because the timings might not be the same. So you are using from India? N no, we're mm. using the UK. U UK timeline. So the manner they use for from India or from UK? No, UK. UK. So how come it's different? If you are using from UK and manner used from UK, so how, how is it different? Uh, what the date? What's the date tomorrow? Yeah, it's 11. Ten. It's, it's mm -hmm. Wednesday. Cal Wednesday. Cal Manor calendar is Wednesday. Wednesday, yeah. So, uh, that's fine. Chitra, are you going to be okay for um, Wednesday. The Wednesday and Thursday? Of course, Prabhu. Great. Thank you so much. And I wanted to ask you... Oh, yes, tomorrow, uh, what's happened is... Um, Normally, I go to primary schools, or, or at the moment, we do virtual assemblies with primary schools. For Diwali. For the autumn term. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow, actually, the timing is a little different, and it clashes with our seminar, because it's a secondary school, and they want to do it right at the end of their day, which is 2.50 UK time to 3.50 UK time. So what I was going to suggest is if we can start the seminar half an hour later, so UK time will be four o'clock. I think Canadian time will be 11 o'clock. It's fine by me, okay. no problem. Mauritian time will be eight o'clock, uh, if that's okay. Uh, Karuna? It's okay, Prabhu. And tomorrow, if you want to join uh, the school program, uh, that will start at, uh, it will be 2.50 UK time, so 6.50 your time. So you're welcome to join. That's going to be a uh, secondary school, 13-year-olds. Uh, should be very interesting. Sorry, Prabhu. Tomorrow I, I'm starting to cook the sweets for Diwali. Okay. No problem. No problem. No problem. And so cook a few extra for us, huh? <laughs> yes, of course. I offer you virtually. Oh, come on. <laughs> I, do, I don't no, like this. we have to post them. <laughs> <laughs> In time for Diwali, okay? <laughs>